Hi friends, thank you for joining me for another episode of Courtney Creates Arts and Crafts. Today we are making Valentine's cards with minimal supplies. Let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have two pieces of watercolor cardstock. This happens to be arches and it's cold pressed, which means it has a little bit of grain. I've cut them down to a standard A2 card size as I'm going to be adhering them to a pre-folded card once I'm done. Right here I have my drawing gum. I'm going to be painting this onto the card front, which is a masking solution that I will use to paint lettering onto my card fronts. Once the gum is dry, I will then watercolor my design on top of it. And then once the watercolor is dry, I will rub away that masking solution to reveal the type. The lettering that I'm using for these cards are actually designs that I created using Canva with a couple of particular fonts that I like. I will list the fonts in the description underneath for this video. I'm working from two different watercolor sets today. One set is an iridescent watercolor starry colors set that I will link below as well. And another is just a palette with a series of Daniel Smith watercolor paints that I have acquired over the years and I will list those colors as well. For the lettering, I will paint with drawing gum the designs that you see printed out here using a very inexpensive light pad that I found at the dollar store. Okay, so even though the watercolor paper is quite heavy, when I layer it with my printed design and the light pad, you can still easily see the design. I made sure to print out that lettering quite large. Since I'm going to be painting this with a paintbrush, I find that it's easier to use a font that's a little bit thicker and to also ensure that the letters are quite large in size. This just makes the process much easier. So I've already stirred up the drawing gum. When you let it sit for a while, it does tend to get a little thick and the sediment uh, drops to the bottom of the container. So you just wanna make sure that you take some time to stir that and I'm slowly tracing the letters. I'm applying some downward pressure with my brush stroke to get to make those thicker lines and then lifting up with the brush to create the finer lines. Calligraphy is a combination of both thick and thin lines using a combination of both light and heavy pressure. design. I'm trying to decide which sentiment to use today. I really love that XOXO brush script there, but I've ultimately decided to go with the word love and I'll save those other phrases and designs for another day. So I'm positioning my watercolor card front, trying to achieve the best composition here and because I find those other printed letters a little bit distracting, I'll go ahead and cover them up with a separate piece of cardstock, just for the sake of my concentration. Though this is sped up, I actually trace these letters very slowly. I painted over the thick lines first and then with a very light pressure, I painted the thinner lines. I really like the way this turned out. Make sure that before you start applying your watercolor that you've allowed the drying gum to dry completely. You can also use your heat tool to speed up the drying process. Just ensure that you don't get too close to the paper with the heat tool or use a low setting. Okay, so now that the drawing gum is, and my mask is dry, I am applying a wash all over the front of that cardstock. And then I will start dropping in a little bit of color. Today I am using per a shade of purple, blue, and a little bit of moon glow. Moon glow 
is a watercolor that has a bit of gray and blue and purple in it and it flows really nicely so anytime I am doing a wash I tend to gravitate towards this color since these are Valentine's cards I thought that purples and reds and blues would be a nice palette to use for these designs but you could really use any colors here if you're creating a card for a different holiday such as Christmas or even if it's a thank you card or a birthday card you may want to mix up your color palette so first I apply a generous amount of paint using a wet on wet technique I'll clean my brush and just add some more water to allow that paint to flow out toward the edges of the cardstock. The shades that I'm using today are Dioxazine Purple and Permanent Rose. And then you'll see I, I use a little Moon Glow toward the end and a little French Ultramarine on the second card. These are all Daniel Smith pink colors. You really can't mess up this design as long as you have put enough water onto your cardstock and you apply the paint very loosely to allow it to just flow around those words. One thing that I notice, especially with this sentiment, any white area inside the letters, you want to make sure that you have painted into those areas. You'll see when I go to move the drawing gum that E and me, I end up having to draw in that white space a little bit because otherwise that E looks like an O. So just want to make sure that you apply paint all over those letters. The drying gum is has a provides a or rubber surface and it won't allow any of the watercolor to seep underneath. So don't be afraid to apply paint on top of it. Off screen, I dried the watercolor with my heat tool. So my project is completely dry. I've picked up some of this iridescent paint and using a few different shades I'm going to spatter paint all over the card front here just to give it a little bit of extra dimension and interest. The nice thing about these paints is that even though they're iridescent and they're light shades, the white tends to be a bit opaque and I have achieved great results um, spattering on top of other colors. Otherwise, I would probably use a little bit of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, but in this case I find that, and with this set in particular, I find that the white is opaque enough to be applied on top of colors. I dried my project a little bit more with my heat tool before removing the tape. There are two reasons why I taped down this card front to my craft mat here. One is to prevent the cardstock from bowing a little bit when it gets wet and rippling. The other reason is I really like the look of a plain white border all the way around the watercolor. It just provides um, a nice, clean, polished look. Moving on to my next card design, I am going ahead and taping that down. And I'm going to start this one first with the iridescent gold watercolor paint. I'm going to use a few different colors here and make a light wash all over that love. I'm starting with my the darkest gold color first and applying that on top of that love sentiment. And then I am adding more of the light gold. And I also end up applying a little bit of that iridescent white color in there as well. speed up the drying process of this design here with my heat tool and then I'm going to spatter on a bit of that permanent rose and purple. I use a little bit of the French ultramarine and potentially a little moon glow. I get a little nervous here because the lettering is so fine. I wondered how this would turn out if I would see enough of that white cardstock underneath when I remove the drawing gum. Uh, it ends up turning out perfectly, so I'm telling you, you just need to trust that drying gum that it's going to do its job. So here we go. Here's a close-up look of all the spattering, which looks lovely. I always feel that everything looks better when you spatter with different colors. 
I'm using a rubber eraser to gently remove that drawing gum to reveal the white letters underneath. I also find that once you start to rub off some of that rubber drawing gum, you can then roll it and it tends to work better in removing itself from the cardstock, if that makes any sense. So I alternate between rubbing off the drawing gum with my finger and then also using the eraser. The eraser is great for getting started and removing this solution from the paper here, but then I find um, it also works well to remove it manually with your hand. So you start to see some of that lettering revealed underneath and it looks so pretty. I love how organic those letters look um, with the paint flowing around to create the outline. It's just such a simple, quick and beautiful design that really you can do for any holiday, not just Valentine's. You can make thank you cards this way, birthday cards, really anything. You could also experiment with drawing shapes or using a stencil. There's a lot of different results and designs that can be achieved with this technique. So I've taken a piece of cardstock by Sizzix Surfaces and I've cut it in half to create two card bases and now I'm scoring each at five and a half inches to create a top folding card. Once I've scored these and folded them, I will adhere the finished card designs to the card base. Because these, are, these card bases are pink, I will cut small pieces of white cardstock to glue in the inside of the card in case I want to write a custom, a custom message or a personal greeting on the inside. Here's how they look and I will go ahead and glue those down next. I'm using both a liquid adhesive and my tape runner to glue them down. I decided to use both types of adhesive as the watercolor paper is still a little rippled. Um, one thing that I could have done to make this process a little bit easier is I could have taken the cardstock and run it through my Sizzix Big Shot to flatten it out. But if you don't have a, a die cut machine or a way to press down, uh, to press, to flatten your cardstock, you could also just, you know, sit it under a pile of books or something really heavy to flatten it. I've heard of people using a iron to flatten out their watercolor projects afterward. I just decided to use a couple types of adhesive and that acrylic block to weight down the cardstock and it did a pretty good job flattening it out. I'm using a paintbrush to smooth out the glue just so that it um, isn't, has a nice even application. earlier if you don't paint watercolor in between all those spaces within the letters when you remove the drying gum you will have white spaces inside your letter so you might not it might make the lettering a little less readable so what I'm using is are some sparkly pens here these are jelly roll pens um, I'm trying to figure out which color to use and ultimately I go with the gold and I'm just drawing in a little bit, a little detail on the letter E here so that it's obvious that that word reads as me instead of Mo. Just a little tip. 
Uh, I thought about outlining these letters in gold or silver, but I ultimately decided to keep this card simple and to just go with the current result. And there you have it, two very simple cards made with minimal supplies for card making on a budget. Leave a comment and let me know which one is your favorite. Until next time, I hope you keep your crafty goodness cup full. Bye-bye.